Hello, my brother and sister. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Welcome to this hope cast from the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. I am Reverend Dr. Charles F. Marshall, the senior pastor. This is a place where we encourage spiritual growth and nurture God's children to take care of self, community, and the world through Christian education, radical hospitality, authentic praise, and worship, and service. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Fountain of Hope Christian Church. Let us pray. God, we just thank you today for these that are joining us right now. Lord, we pray that you be in our midst, God. Lord, let your spirit move in us, through us, around us, that we may glorify you and worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, let something today bless these, your people. God, we also pray for any needs, Lord, of, of these, our beloved, who are joining with us today, God. God, there may be needs for financial strength. There may be needs in relationships. There may be needs in professional, in social, whatever the need may be. God, we just ask that you meet in the name of Jesus. Some are grieving today. Some are suffering sickness. God, heal, deliver strengthen in the name of Jesus. God, and as we go forward in this worship experience, God, continue to be with us. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you and we praise you, asking these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, turn in your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter. The book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter the first chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as far and as here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen for the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. So your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you, the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us share in these announcements. If you have any prayer requests, simply send your prayer request to Fountain of Hope Christian Church, P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia 30308. Alternatively, you can reach us by email at fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com, and our compassionate team will fervently pray with and for you trusting that God will work according to his divine will. We also invite you to connect with us through our website at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com. There you will find our monthly newsletter, 
Inside, you'll discover a wealth of valuable information and engaging content to enjoy. If you wish to be added to the listserv to receive our newsletter, please enter your email address and click on the subscribe button. We'll send it straight to your inbox every month. Thank you for joining us here on our YouTube channel. If you have not done so already, we encourage you to please subscribe. Click on that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all of our latest content and receive notifications whenever we post new messages or communications. Hit that subscribe button and let's stay connected. You can also connect with us by looking at our daily scriptures. Each day, these inspiring scriptures will enrich your spiritual journey. We invite you to visit our website to access and meditate on them. See how they can positively impact your Christian walk. We would also like to remind and or invite you to our weekly virtual Bible study held every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. To be a part of our Bible study sessions, simply send a request to fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com and we'll gladly provide you with the link to participate. For those of you seeking a deeper study beyond our regular Bible studies, we are thrilled to inform you that there are some classes available to you through the Christian College of Georgia at no cost or offer at a low cost. These classes are designed to cater to your spiritual growth and personal calling, whether that's to become a minister, a leader, or you just want to grow in your spiritual journey. Explore our Christian education page where you'll find the links to these wonderful learning opportunities. Please take advantage of these resources and as you engage in these classes, we would love to hear about your experiences and growth. Heartfelt thanks to all of you who have been giving. Your gifts are instrumental in enabling us to reach and impact people across the world. If you're inspired to join us now in giving, there are three convenient ways to make your contribution. PayPal. Go to PayPal and use the username at Fountain of Hope to make your donation. Go to our website www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com for a seamless online giving process. And you may also mail a check to Fountain of Hope Christian Church at P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. Let us pray. God, we just thank you for these that are giving right now, these that are putting their treasures on the, the altar of the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. Lord, sowing into this ministry that we may continue to do ministry around the world, reaching people around the world. Thank you for their willingness and their heart of love to give into this ministry. God, we ask that you would bless them and bless their, their, their treasure, bless their gift that it may return to them 70 and 100 fold. God, as we go forward in this ministry, also bless those who were not able to give today. Bless them that they may receive something today that will edify their spirit. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. There is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. God, we just thank you right now for these who are joining with us, God. And let me decrease that you might increase. Let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, Lord, that your people may be edified today, that your people may be uplifted today, that your people may be empowered today. Lord, bless in the name of Jesus today. We ask these blessings. Amen. Amen, amen, in Jesus' name. Now, turn in your Bibles. We're going to look at Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So first, let's look at Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning at the 6th through the 9th verse. And it reads, if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. 
If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Now let's turn over to the book of Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 42nd through the 48th verse which says, but if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and be thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two hands and go into hell, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. And let's go look over to the book of Luke, the 17th chapter. The first three verses that said, Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea without a millstone tied around their neck than cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourselves. The word of God, well, the people of God, Thanks be to God. Today's message is tripping, 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 tripping. Some of you heard the term before, tripping, tripping. We are nearing the end of Lenten season where hopefully you have learned something about yourself. This is a time for you. Hopefully you have found a way to draw nearer to your God. Maybe you increase your prayer life. Maybe you have grown in your daily walk with Christ. All of those are really good accomplishments. Some of you uh, are where you started. You haven't done anything. Praise God, we're praying for you. You may have been a snake in the grass a few weeks ago, and today you're still a snake in the grass. Praise God. On the end of the spectrum, some of you were saved and close to God a few weeks ago, and you are still saved and close to God today, there was no change. And then there's a third group, and this group got worse. They did it their own way. Someone has helped them to get there, or they helped themselves to get there. This message today is for the people who are tripping, who are tripping. They got someone in their life who is tripping them up, or they are tripping someone else up. Praise God. So today, let's talk about tripping. Amen. First, watch for the trippers. Watch for the trippers. Trippers are those things that cause you to stumble. Uh, there are people who cause you to stumble. Their sole purpose in life is to keep you stumbling. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, let me give you a few examples. Do you know any of these kind of people? You're at home watching your evening television show and a tripper calls. They start telling you some gossip about someone. They don't know if it was true because they weren't there when it happened. Now, this tripper has added some stuff that makes it sound more interesting, so you listen. And after you get all the information that you think you have, you call someone else to repeat the lie that was just told to you. If everyone is talking about it according to your tripper, then nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with repeating it. And you rationalize, yeah. Woe to the tripper who is spreading gossip. Hey, Amen. you have decided that you are going to be a good steward of your health. You have spent time with yourself, you decided um, the, that you're not going to take any more of the medicines that the doctor has prescribed for you. You're ready to let those medicines go and you want to be healthy and you, you are decided to change your diet, change the way you live, not eat things that you know are not good for your health. 
and 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 you then you find out that a tripper is calling you up. A tripper calls you. Yes, they do. And they said, guess what? There is a new barbecue restaurant in town. And I heard they are good. The potato salad and the baked beans are so good. They bring tears to your eyes. And even though they, they are full of salt and sugar and all these other kind of toxins, you, you break your diet to enjoy some succulent, smoky, good tasting brisket. Oh, that brisket just makes your mouth water, don't it? Woe to the triple who entices you to eat something that you decided not to eat. Well, maybe you've been married for 18 years. Your spouse has been faithful, so you think, and you, you, you trust that you have been faithful as well. And you have now sending your child off to college, and now it's just you and your spouse, and you have this extra time since you no longer have to keep up with this child. And while you were waiting in line for groceries, a man or woman stands in front of you who makes you sweat. You lose track of who and where you are. You forget you have a wedding band on your finger and the man or the woman smiles at you and you just fall to pieces. You just lose it. Woe to the tripper who gets you to commit adultery or lust. Now, for those of you listening to this who say you don't have any kind of temptation, well, I just haven't called it out yet. You have some temptations. You may have two or three, and maybe even four. You, you might not see or try to stay away from the same things that I mentioned, but you have something that tempts you. Everybody has some temptations. Even Christ had temptations. For some, it's alcohol, cigarettes, sex, drugs, cell phones, food, power, greed, shopping, lust, and the list goes on and on. If someone touches you in a certain way, you, you may just lose your mind. It's only temptation if it's something that you want. So Mark 14, 38 says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If your faith is not strong enough to manage your temptations, leave it alone. Stay away from it. This all goes for people that cause you to do things that are not good for you. You know what is good for you and you know what is not good. You make the choice to do things not good at the suggestion of someone else. And this someone could be a brother or a sister, it could be a husband, it could be a wife, it could be a friend, it could be a stranger. In all these cases, you still have a choice whether you do it or not. You have a choice. Jesus uses a parable using your hands and feet. As the example, remember that each of us are part of the body of Christ. Each of us. And Mark 9, 43 through 45 says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life crippled than to have two hands and go into hell into the unquenchable fire. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter the lane than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. I'm not telling you, you hear me clearly. I am not telling you to cut anything off. However, I am saying if something causes you to sin, leave it alone or leave him or her alone. If hanging out at the club causes you to sin, leave it alone. If you have a problem managing what you eat, stay away from the buffets. No more all-you-can-eat specials. Oh, beloved, if you have a weakness for someone else, stay away from them. Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better to enter life lame than to have two feet and go to hell. You have to cut some acquaintances. You, you have to make distance from sometimes even family members. There may be certain people on your job you don't need to get close to. You can be nice. You can be cordial. You can speak them with love. But does that mean you have to be under them all the time? Praise the Lord, everybody. Watch for the trippers. Watch for the trippers. Jesus says these trippers, it would be better to, for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. But while there are others who are trippers, 
The second thing I want you to remember is don't you be a tripper. Don't be a tripper. Don't you don't be a tripper. It, it That means you don't need to go around causing others to sin. Yes, if you cause others to sin, you will suffer the same punishment as the person who has a millstone tied around their neck and thrown into the sea. Jesus says in Luke 17 and 3, watch yourselves. Jesus taught that the cause of sin will be destroyed at some point. The causes of sin will be destroyed at some point. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. If you cause others to sin, you have just put a bullseye on your back and made you a target. Hear what Jesus said in Matthew 13, 40 through 42. He says, as the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of age. The son of man will send out his angels and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin, everything that causes sin, everything thing that you hear me everything somebody say everything everything that causes sin in all who do evil they will throw them in the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth today we live in a world where there is much to change the way people think how you think controls how you act if you think you are immune from it then go <laughs> Go outside and see what affects what you think and what you feel. If you think you are immune from being influenced, then don't watch TV. Don't get on the internet. Don't go out your home to see billboards and advertisements on the bus and on the street and all over the place. Congress is passing a bill that will ban TikTok because of how it influences people, because it could be controlled by the Chinese government. There are over 1 billion users of the 5.3 billion users that are on the internet. 1 billion of these are TikTok. That's about 23% of everyone on the internet is on TikTok. And it's called TikTok because once you start watching it, there's short videos and then 15 minute goes by, 30 minute goes by, hour goes by. Next, you know, you I have been sitting there two or three hours watching little short TikTok videos because it, it figures out what you like. Yeah. And the more it figures out what you like, it keeps giving it to you. And so many times some people can't put it down because it keeps giving them what they like looking at. Isn't that scary? There are roughly 170 million of those TikTok users in the United States. And all of this is part of artificial intelligence. It's here, folks. AI. Artificial intelligence is here. People are writing things with AI apps and creating fake images with AI and making create, uh, uh, fake videos with AI. Christians, if you think you are immune from it, let me share a few things. AI can breach your privacy by getting information on who you are, what you like, where you live, who you talk to. Yes, all of this other information, and it can be misused for many reasons. AI can make fake pictures and videos of you. Some examples of this year shows up in elections around the world, where the video of an opposition lawmaker in Bangladesh is wearing a bikini. Matt Brown and David Klepper filed a report with the Associated Press on March 8th of this year, 2024, about fabricated images of Black people appearing in U.S. election pictures. That means that the, some of the Black people that you think you are seeing are not really real people on the video that you're watching, with many other images that are finding their way to TikTok and Facebook and X, which is the form of Twitter, whatever the, the, the stream or the social media venue that you use, AI is replacing tasks that were formerly performed by people, by humans. Just think about it. There was a time when you could remember everyone's phone number and how many of you now remember telephone numbers these days? Yeah, because you just hit the button on your phone. Some of you just call it out and it'll call it for you. In Fort Worth, Texas, a McDonald's opened this year that is fully automated. A McDonald's hamburgers is fully automated, means that everything is done automatically. You can truly have it your way. 
There is no person to give you attitude at the drive-thru. Make your order, pay your money, pick up your food and go. There are fully automated stores doing the same thing. Aldi, uh, the grocery store chain debuts an automated checkout tech at a Chicago store. Walmart announced that 65% of the stores will be fully automated by 2027. 65% of their stores, according to the AP Associated Press. Yes, minimum wage has been raised in many states. Now ranges from about $7.25 to $17 per hour. And for many people who rely on this income to make ends meet, now, many of those low paying jobs will be replaced with automation. Automated. There are many things that control how you think. Computers are learning what you like to look at on the internet. What did you purchase? Even those convenience like uh, ClickUp and Amazon Alexa, Socratic, Cortana, Alial. Wale Tabneen and Parrot AI and Google Assistant are listening to you and creating advertising and special suggestions based on what you like. Pay attention if you mention some things around your phone or those virtual assistants like Alexis. Watch ads start appearing on your Facebook and on your YouTube and on your other social media. If you buy something, yeah, and you you bought something and then you'll start seeing a bunch of ads show up on your YouTube and on your Google and all those other things. If you have a smart TV, smart TV, yeah, the TVs are supposed to be smart these days. They may be listening to you and may be hearing, especially if they're connected to the internet, they may be hearing you. Don't be a tripper. Don't cause someone else to send don't cause someone else to do something that God is not pleased. An example of a person coming close to making someone sin was Abram. The form, he became Abraham. And before he became Abraham, he was Abram. And he and his family went to Egypt in Genesis 12 due to a famine. His wife, Sarah, was a very beautiful woman. But when she got to Egypt, Abram lied and said she was his sister because he was afraid of being killed, if she was his wife indeed. And so Pharaoh took his wife, Sarah, into his house and gave Abram sheep and cattle and camels. You know, that's wealth, that's money. So Abram got some money out of it to let his wife sleep in the house with Pharaoh. He just pimped his wife to survive. Genesis 12 and 17 says that the Lord inflicted a serious disease on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarah, who was living in the house with him. When Pharaoh found out, he made Abram, Sarah, and the entire household of Abram leave Egypt immediately. God continued to bless Abram due to the covenant that God had made with Abram before he went to Egypt. But Abram calls Pharaoh to sin. The Lord cut the family of Jeroboam off because of the sins of Jeroboam and the sins he calls Israel to commit. First Kings 14, 14 through 16. Amy Winehouse wrote a song about it, says, I told you I was troubled. You know that I'm no good. Somebody tells you that they're no good, you better believe them. Or the Grammy-winning artist, Billie Eilish, who sings When the Party's Over. She says, don't you know I'm no good for you? I'll hurt you if you let me. Don't be a tripper. Don't cause your family to trip, your children to trip, or whoever. Don't, because guess what? People are watching you. And if you are intentionally or unintentionally being a tripper, listen to what Jesus says for you. How are you living in front of your children? Don't, don't go by what I say do, but watch what you do because that is a bigger statement. Don't cause your friends to trip. Are you pushing them up to do stuff that you know is wrong? Don't cause those who follow you to trip. Woe unto you who mislead others. 
Romans 16, 17 and through 18 says, don't cause division and create obstacles that mislead people in their faith. Proverbs 12 and 22 says, don't lie. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Amos 2 and 4 says, lies that lead others astray. Oh, are bad things. Don't trip others. Don't you be a tripper. And finally, we talk about entering the kingdom of God. In Mark 9, 47 through 48, it says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. Watch out for those who are tripping. Don't you be a tripper and watch out for those who are tripping. Jesus says it's about entering the kingdom of God. I don't care how you feel, it's what you do and how you treat folks and what decisions you make about yourself. I don't care how good it feels to trip on earth, you won't take that into the kingdom of God. No, no, you won't. It's better to lose those things that cause you to trip and go into the kingdom of God than have those things and go straight to hell. Yes, we are living in a world where people are trying to make God's requirements as they go. They want to say God thinks and acts a certain ways based on what they say. As smart and as important as you think you are, you can't make God's ordinances up. You can't determine how you are going into the kingdom of God. Only God can do that. I want to leave you with the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. So he was important to the temple. He was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He knew that other Pharisees hated Jesus and wanted to destroy Jesus. Just make him disappear. So one night, at night, so nobody would see him, Nicodemus slipped away and found Jesus. He called Jesus rabbi, which means the leader of the Jewish council considered this person a great Jewish scholar or a teacher. Not only did Nicodemus consider Jesus a scholar and a teacher, but other Pharisees did too, because he said, we know, we know that you are a teacher who comes from God. Nicodemus uh, acknowledged that not only he, but other Pharisees knew that Jesus was from God. No one could perform these signs you are doing if God were not with him. No one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus said in John 3 and 3, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Jesus further describes it in John 3, 5 through 6, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of the water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Are you born again today, beloved? Have you been born of the water and the spirit? When you have the Holy Spirit, he dwells with you and shall be in you, John 14 and 17. When you have the Holy Spirit, he shall teach you all things, John 14 and 26. When you have the Holy Spirit, he shall bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you, John 14 and 26. So when you get troubled, you know that the Lord is a very present help in the time of trouble, Psalms 46 and 1. When you have evil all around, around you, you know that the Lord will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy, Psalm 23. When you get worried, it comes to your remembrance when you need it. When you get worried about being alone in your battles, Jesus said, lo, I will be with you even until the end of the earth. When you have the Holy Spirit, he will guide you in, into all that you do, John 16, 13. Just watch and see. God will show you the truth. People may lie and try to deceive you, but God will show you who the snake is and where the snake is. God will show you who is lying. God will show you where you need to be when you have the Holy Spirit with you. He will even tell you what is to come. If something is coming between you and your God, let it go. If your 
work. It's your work. Let it go. If someone is causing you to be separated from your God, let them go. If you are doing something that causes you to be separated from your God, let it go. David knew he had sinned when he had a man killed to have his wife. He wrote in Psalms 51, I have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions. My sin is always before me against you, and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I will sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop. I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, O oh God, and renew the steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Grant me willing spirit to sustain me. Oh, we need God. Say, God, I need you right now. God, I need your spirit right now. God, I need you with me and can't do it without you right now. God, I need you. Now, this is between you and God. And you've got to face God in order to face these things that cause you to trip and cause you to trip others. You need to go to God to get some strength. The spiritual writer says, I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem like, just like, just like John. Don't you want to be ready? Are you ready today? Don't go around tripping other people or you won't be ready. Don't let others trip you or you won't be ready. You see, God's got a way that you can't go over. And God's got a way that you can't go under. God's got a way that you can't go around it. Hallelujah. You got to come in at the door. Let us pray. God, we just thank you right now for these that are coming in the door right now. These that are saying, God, forgive me for I have sinned. I don't want to be separated from you right now in the name of Jesus. Bless them. Bless them right now. And Lord, have mercy on them and forgive them. According to your divine mercy, God, we pray for them. Surround them with people to love on them and to strengthen them and to teach them and to encourage them that they may grow in your grace. And even those yet on the way, God, we just ask that you would continue to bless and strengthen them as they make their journey. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother and sister, we invite you to join this fellowship. You may join this fellowship a number of ways. If you already belong to a fellowship, you can join us by just simply letting us know that you want to join under Watch Care, which means that you keep your membership wherever you are. But as a part of this fellowship, you will be able to enjoy the right to membership under this opportunity. You may also, if you've never been baptized, we will gladly baptize you into the fall. Let us know. And other ways you can join is you may join by letter. We will gladly receive a letter from wherever you're coming from. Let us know that you want to be a part of this membership. Bring that letter and we will bring you into the fall. And then finally, by Christian experience, Amen. You've already been baptized. You've already have come into the fold and, and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you can just step in and let God use you in this fellowship. We invite you now to come. Today is your day. The door stands wide open. We invite you to come. Amen. Amen. And amen. God loved us and loved us so much that God activated his grace for us.
through humanity's history, God continues to love his creation. And through his son, Jesus Christ, we're able to experience that grace through this outward act of what God is also able to do inside of us. We meet here at the table that is open to all. And as you share with us today, our prayer is that God meets you right where you are. We remember as Jesus was preparing to go to the cross, to the hill called Calvary, he had a meal with the disciples during the season of Passover in the upper room. And there he shared with them but most of all, he demonstrated to them with this act of love as he shared this last meal. And there he took the cup and he blessed it. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for these gifts. Thank you for this sacrifice. Bless this bread, bless this cup as we remember the great gift that you've given us, or you loved us, loved the world so much that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name, amen. And he said, this cup represents my blood, which was shed for you. For as often as you drink of this cup, you remember my death till I come. Drink. Jesus took the bread and he broke it. He said, this bread represents my body, which was given for you. For as oft as you eat of this bread, you remember the great gift that I have given for you. Take, eat. Thank you for joining us today in this whole cast. Our prayer is that something was said that will bless you and strengthen you as you make your journey. If you want to join us or need us, reach out to us. Go to www.fountainofchristianchurch.com Now unto him who is able to keep us in heaven and to present us before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, majesty, dominion, and power. May he bless you. May he keep you. And maybe